Minimum window substring is a sliding window problem asked at Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, Lyft, Google, LinkedIn, Apple, Bloomberg. This problem is definitely hard, so get your thinking cap on and let's get into it. For this problem, we are given two strings and we need to return the minimum window in string S that will contain all characters in string T. Confused? Let's look at an example. The string ABC has three unique characters. We need to find the smallest substring in S that contains all of those characters. Looking at string S, we can see that A, B, and C are in this substring. In this substring, as you can see, we actually have two Bs here instead of just one, but that is totally fine. We just need at least one. The characters A, B, and C are also in this substring and this substring. There are other substrings that satisfy this requirement, but remember we are looking for the smallest substring, so let's just ignore the others. Looking at these smaller substrings, B, A, and C, would be the minimum window substring since it has a length of four, which is the smallest. Now that we understand what the problem is asking us to do, let's jump into the approach to solve this problem, which is a sliding window algorithm. A sliding window algorithm sounds complicated, but really all it is is a window or section that is formed over parts of your data. And in our case, our data is just a string. We move this window in increments over our data to perform some sort of computation. And in our case, that would be finding the minimum window substring. Going back to the example we looked at previously, let's do a step-by-step -step walkthrough of the algorithm. The first thing we need to do is create a map to generate a count of all characters in string T. This is so that as we iterate through string S, we will know how many characters we have seen in T. This will make more sense as we go through the problem, so don't worry. So far, we have A having a count of one, B having a count of one and C having a count of one. Now get ready, I said this problem was going to be hard. We need a couple different variables that are gonna be used. We're gonna to have to have an I and J pointer, both pointing at index zero in string S. Another variable called count is going to be initialized to the number of unique characters we have in string T, which we can easily get from our map. So our count is going to be initialized to three. Now we are going to initialize a left and right variable, which will be used to keep track of the minimum substring positions we come across as we are iterating through string S. So our left pointer will start at zero and our right pointer will start at 12, which is the last index in string S. Technically in the beginning, our left and right pointers can be initialized to anything. So don't pay too much attention to the values right now. Now we need a variable min length to keep track of the difference between the right and left pointer. This value is the length of the substring. Technically, we don't need this variable, but it's really just for convenience. So our min length is going to be initialized to 13. This is initialized to 13 because if there is a substring in S, it will be guaranteed to be lower than the length of S. Finally, we need a Boolean variable called found to determine if we have found a substring in S. The reason we need this is because if we do not find a substring in S, we must return an empty string. All right, now that we have all of these variables initialized, we can get into the details of the sliding window algorithm. Our J pointer is currently looking at character A. We check if character A is in our map, and in this case it is. That means we need to decrease the value of character A down to zero. Now we need to check if character A is at zero or not, and in this case it is. That means we can decrease our count variable. So our count is now two. The reason we decrease the count is because our substring so far is character A, and we have satisfied the amount of A's we need in this substring, which was just one. Now we need to find one B and one C to find a successful minimum window substring. We're gonna to continue to move our J pointer forward until we have satisfied finding all of these unique characters in string S. So our J pointer is going to move forward. And if our count variable is greater than zero, that means we have not found a minimum window substring yet and that we should continue on. So our J pointer is currently looking at character D. D is not in the map. So we ignore it and move forward. J is looking at character O. O is not in the map, ignore it, move forward. 
J is now at character B, and that is in our map. That means we need to decrement the value of B, which would be zero. And since B is at zero, we can now decrease our count down to one. This is saying that we need just one more character to be found, character C, in order to find a minimum window substring. So far from index zero to where our J pointer currently is, you can see that we have an A and a B inside of this substring. Now we're just trying to look for the C character. Our J pointer is going to move forward again and check if our count is greater than zero. In this case it is, so we continue on. Our J pointer is now looking at character E. That is not in the map, so we ignore it and move forward. J pointer is now looking at character C. That is in our map. So we're going to decrease the value down to zero. Since C is equal to zero, that means we decrease our count down to zero as well. Our J pointer is going to move forward. And now we check if our count is greater than zero, which it is not. What this means is that we found a minimum substring, but now our I pointer needs to be moved forward until our count is greater than zero again. This is the most confusing part of the algorithm. The reason why we have to do this is because there might be extra useless characters in the prefix of our substring that we don't need. Our I pointer is at character A, that is in our map. So we're going to do the opposite of what we did in the previous steps. We're now going to increase the value in A to one. Since our count is not zero, we now increase our count to one as well. Now we check if J minus I is less than our current minimum length. J minus I is the length of our substring, which is why we are comparing it to the current minimum length. J minus I is less than our min length in this case. So now we save our I and J positions with the left and right variables. So left becomes one, right becomes six, and then our min length is j minus i, which is five. Since we found a substring, we now set found equal to true, meaning our final result will not be an empty string. And now it's really just performing the same steps. So our j pointer is looking at character O, that is not in the map, we ignore it, move forward. J pointer is looking at character D, not in the map, ignore it, move forward. J pointer is at character E, not in the map, ignore it, move forward. J pointer is at character B, that is in the map, so we're going to decrease the value. B is now equal to negative one. That value is not zero, so we don't do anything to our count. We move our J pointer forward and check our count. Our count is greater than zero, so we continue our search for an A character. J pointer is at character A, which is in our map. So that means we decrease the value down to zero. And since it is at zero, we also decrease our count to zero. We move our J pointer forward again and check if our count is greater than zero. It is not, which means we found another minimum window substring. Now we're gonna move our I pointer forward to get rid of the useless characters. So right now it's currently looking at character D and that is not in the map, so we move forward. Now our I pointer is looking at character O, that's not in the map, so we move forward. Our I pointer is now at character B, that is in the map, so that means we increase this value to zero. Since B's value is not greater than zero, we do nothing to our count and move forward. Our I pointer is at character E, that is not in the map, so we move forward. Now it's looking at character C, which is in the map, so we're going to increase the value to one. We move our I pointer forward, and since the value is greater than zero, we can now increase our count to one. Now we're going to check the length of the substring again. So we do that by doing J minus I, which equals 11 minus six, which equals five. If we compare this number to our current minimum length, five is not less than five. So we continue on without setting the left and right pointer. Our J pointer is looking at character N that is not in the map, so we're going to ignore it and move forward. Our J pointer is at character C, and that is in the map, so we decrease the value to zero. And since C's value is at zero, we decrease our count to zero. We move J forward again and check if the count is greater than zero. It isn't, 
So now we can see what letters we can shave off by moving our I pointer forward. Right now, the substring we have so far is O, D, E, B, A, N, C. And that is valid, but technically we don't need the O, D, E part since none of those characters are in A, B, or C. Our I pointer will go to O, D, and E, and all of those characters are not in the map, so we're just going to move forward. And now our I pointer is looking at character B, and that is in the map, so we're going to increase the value to one. We move our I pointer forward again, and since the value of B is greater than zero, that means we can increase our count to one. Now we're gonna check the length of our substring, by doing j minus i, which would be 13 minus 10, which equals three. Three is less than our current minimum length of five, so our new left and right values are going to get set. Our left will be equal to 10, our right will be equal to 13, and then our new min length would be three. And now we are done. Since our j pointer is not looking at an index any longer, we just need to compute the substring between our left and right pointers. Keep in mind though that our left and right pointers are one step ahead. So we take all characters inclusive between left minus one and right minus one, which would be B, A, and C. All right, so let's implement the code for this solution. We are given two strings, S and T, and then we need to return a string which will be the minimum window substring. The first thing we can do is just have various base cases if our string S or string T is null or empty, we know that we can just return an empty string. And now we're going to get a mapping of all of the characters in string T. Now we're going to initialize all of the variables that we talked about. And now this is where the actual sliding window part comes. We are going to move our J pointer forward until it hits the very end of string S. So we can say while J is less than S dot length, and then we can grab that character. So we can say char and char equals S dot char at j plus plus every time that we extract a character from the string we are automatically going to move our j pointer forward right after and now we're going to check if this character is present in the map or not so if our map contains the key and char what this means is we are going to decrease the value of this character inside the map so we'll say map dot put and char map dot get and char minus one. And then if our map dot get and char, if this value is equal to zero at this point, that means we have satisfied the requirement to have all of these characters in the substring. And we can say count minus equal by one. When we come out of this if check, this is where we check if our count is greater than zero or not. So if count is greater than zero, then we are just going to continue. If this if statement is satisfied, that means we have not successfully found a minimum window substring yet. If we make it out of this if statement, however, this is where we are going to shave off any of that extra unnecessary characters in the prefix of the substring. So we can say while our count is equal to zero, then we are going to extract the start character now, and we can say s.char at i, plus plus and once again every time we extract a character from our i pointer we're going to move it forward right after and now in this step we're going to do exactly the opposite of what we did on lines 18 to 20. so what we can do we can actually just copy this section and let's put it down here and let's fix the uh, indentation and instead of nchar 
we'll put start char in all of these sections. And then instead of decreasing, we're going to be increasing. And right here as well, plus equal to one. And then the only other difference is instead of saying if it's equal to zero, we wanna say if it's greater than zero. Finally, when we make it outside of this while loop, that means we have successfully shaved off all of the unnecessary characters in the start of our string. And now we just need to compute the length of our substring. So we can say if j minus i, if that is less than our current min, then what that means is we set our left pointer to i, our right pointer to j, and then our min variable is going to just be j minus i. And remember, the min variable is really just for convenience. And then we also can say found is now equal to true. And then when we come out of this while loop, this is where we have either found a substring or we didn't. And so we can determine whether we return an empty string or not using that found Boolean variable. So we can say return if it's not found, then we just return an empty string. However, if we did find a substring, this is where we need to actually compute the substring of string s using our left and right pointers. So we can say s.substring of left minus one and right. And so this is pretty much the equivalent of saying left minus one, right minus one inclusive. So let's make sure the solution works. What? What the I put a capital S instead of a lowercase s, so let's submit that one more time. <laughs> the time complexity of our solution is going to be big O of 2 times n plus m. So n is the length of string s and m is the length of string t. We must iterate over string t in order to create the map of counts. In the worst case, our i and j pointer could potentially touch every single character in s. So this could technically be written as n plus n plus m, but since we drop constants, it just becomes big O of n plus m. Our space complexity is going to be big O of n, where n is the length of string t. The only memory we initialize is the map, and this will be the size of string t. Check out my other sliding window algorithm tutorial here to see how to solve one of the most popular sliding window problems on LeetCode. Like and subscribe for more content and check out my Patreon for Discord access and resume reviews. That is all I have for you and I will see you later.